we'll talk about electrical safety and this is part two. Electrically powered equipment can pose a significant hazard to workers, particularly when mishandled or not maintained. Many electrical devices have high voltage or high power requirements, carrying even more risk. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about the effects of electrical current on human body. What is the difference between a qualified and an unqualified electrical staff personnel? And how to work on an energized circuit safely? You are on the platform of Safety First Life. If you are first time on this channel, kindly subscribe it and press the bell icon for all future notifications. And if you find the video informative, then like, comment and share it with your friends and colleagues. Let us start with electrical shock hazards. Dear friends and fellows, the major hazards associated with electricity are electrical shock, fire and arc flash. Electrical shock occurs when the body becomes part of the electrical circuit, either when an individual comes in contact with both wires of an electrical circuit or one wire of an energized circuit and the ground or a metallic part that has become energized by contact with an electrical conductor. The severity and effects of an electrical shock depend on a number of factors such as the pathway through the body, the amount of current, the length of time of the exposure, and whether the skin is wet or dry. Water is a great conductor of electricity, allowing current to flow more easily in wet conditions and through the wet skin. Every person who is from the electrical department are an ordinary worker on site. They should understand, they must know that wet skin or wet conditions allowing more current and the flow of current easily through the body, a minor voltage can make a massive electric shock. The effect of the shock may range from a slight tingling to severe burns to cardiac arrest. I'll discuss the general relationship between the degree of injury and amount of current for a 60 cycle hand to foot path of one second's duration of shock. While understanding these parameters, keep in mind that most electrical circuits can provide under normal conditions up to 20,000 milliamperes of current flow. Here you have to remember, in addition to the electric shock hazards, Sparks from electrical equipment can serve as an ignition source for flammable or explosive vapors. Let us understand now the current and the reaction of current on the human body. One milliampere, the reaction is perception level. Five milliamps, slight shock felt, not painful, but disturbing. If the current ratio is 6 to 30 milliamps, it's a painful shock, but it's in let go range. If the current ratio is 50 to 150 milliamps, extreme pain, respiratory arrest, severe muscular contraction. If the electrical current ratio is in between 1000 to 4300 milliamps, it will cause ventricular fibrillation. But if the current ratio is more than 10,000 milliamps, it will cause directly cardiac arrest, severe burns, and the probable death. Here you have to remember, one milliamps means the thousandth part of a ampere. It's a very small amount of current. Dear friends and fellows, after understanding the relationship between current 
and the reaction of the body. Let us understand now what is arc flash. A hazardous arc flash can occur in any electrical device, regardless of voltage, in which the energy is high enough to sustain an arc. Potential places where this can happen include panel boards and switchboards, motor control centers, metal clad switchgear, transformers, motor starters and drive cabinets, fused disconnects, and any place that can have equipment failure. These all are the places, are the possible places where an arc flash can occur. In an arc flash incident, an enormous amount of concentrated radiant energy explodes outward from electrical equipment. The explosion creates pressure waves that can damage a person's hearing. A high intensity flash that can damage their eyesight and a superheated ball of gas that can severely burn a worker's body and melt metal. It's a critical situation, very alarming, very dreadful, and very dangerous. Let us discuss now electrical safety related work practices. Dear friends and fellows, remember only qualified workers who have been trained in the avoidance of electrical hazards are permitted to work on or near exposed energized parts. Safety-related work practices are employed to prevent electric shock or other injuries resulting from either direct or indirect electrical contact when work is performed near or on equipment or circuits which are or may be energized. The specific safety-related work practices must be consistent with the nature and extent of the associated electrical hazards. A very important point, qualified electricians versus unqualified electricians. What are the risks and what it makes the difference for the purposes of electrical safety-related work practices? There are two types of employees in the workplace that may come in contact with electrical equipment on a job site, qualified and unqualified. A qualified employee is defined as a worker who has been trained to avoid electrical hazards when working on or near exposed energized parts. A qualified electrician is familiar with the safety related work practices as required by electrical regulations and the OSHA standards. A qualified electrician is able to distinguish exposed light parts of electrical equipment. A qualified electrician is knowledgeable of the skills and techniques used to determine the normal voltages of exposed parts and components. But on the other hand, an unqualified employee is defined as a worker who has little or no training regarding electrical hazards, even though unqualified persons should not be exposed to energized parts. They should be provided with information and training necessary to perform their job in a safe manner and understanding the following. Number one, be familiar with any electrical hazards in the workplace. Number two, understand procedures to follow and to protect themselves when they work around electricity. Number three, understand which tasks that can only be performed by qualified workers, electricians, for example, maintenance and repairs. Number four, know when and how to report electrical problems. Number five, know what to do in the event of emergency involving electricity. Number six, know how to inspect electrical tools and equipment before use to make sure insulation and wiring are in good condition. Dear friends and fellows, live parts to which an employee may be exposed must be de-energized before the employee works 
on or near them unless de-energizing the parts introduces additional or increased hazards or is unfeasible due to equipment design or operational limitations. Examples of increased or additional hazards include interruption of life support equipment, deactivation of emergency alarm systems, shutdown of hazardous location ventilation equipment, or removal of illumination for an area. Live parts that operate at less than 50 volts to ground need not be de-energized if there are no increased exposures to electrical burns or to explosions due to electric arcs. You are on the platform of safety first life. We are discussing electrical safety part two. Let us discuss now how to work safely on or near energized circuits. Live parts to which an employee may be exposed must be de-energized before the employee works on or near them unless de-energizing the parts introduces additional or increased hazards is unfeasible due to equipment design or operational limitations. Examples of increased or additional hazards include interruption of life support equipment, deactivation of emergency alarm systems, shutdown of hazardous location ventilation equipment, or removal of illumination for an area. Live parts that operate at less than 50 volts to ground need not be de-energized if there are no increased exposures to electrical burns or to explosions due to electric arcs. When employees work on de-energized parts are near enough to them to expose the employees to any electrical hazard, you have to follow these safety-related best work practices. Number one, treat as energized any conductors and parts of electrical equipment that have been de-energized but have not been properly locked out or tagged. Number two, while any employee is exposed to contact with parts of fixed electric equipment or circuits which have been de-energized, the circuits energizing the parts shall be locked out or tagged or both. In addition, Electrical hazards must be controlled. A qualified electrician must test the circuit to verify de-energization from all voltage sources. Safe procedures for de-energizing circuits and equipment must be determined before circuits or equipment are de-energized. All electric energy sources must be disconnected. Control circuit devices such as push buttons electrical switches and interlocks must not be used as the sole means of de-energizing circuits or equipment. Interlocks must not be used as a substitute for lockout and tagging procedures. These are very important points and you have to consider while de-energizing the circuits or panels once you are going to work on electrical panels or energized circuits. Dear friends and fellows, employees are considered working on a near exposed energized parts when working on exposed live parts either by direct contact or contact by means of tools or materials or when working near enough to energized parts to be exposed to any hazard they present. Only qualified persons, electricians, are permitted to work on Electric circuit parts or equipment that have not been de-energized, lock out, tag out. Qualified electricians are capable of working safely on energized circuits and are familiar with the proper use of special precautionary techniques, personal protective equipment, insulating and shielding materials, and the insulated tools. In the upcoming video, we'll learn what is the safe distance while we are working overhead and how we can work safely if the services are buried underground. And that's all for now. Planning session, electrical safety part two is over. If you have any question, 
please ask in the comment section thanks for watching and don't forget to like comment and share the video hope to see you soon with a new hsc tutorial until then take care good luck and goodbye